Hello everybody, I'm back with another update. Finally! This one's pretty big, so we're just gonna jump in. So first things first, we did some visual work. I've been making some edits to the shader slowly but surely, which I should preface, I did not make the shader. I bought it from the marketplace. I just wanna get that out of the way and say that now. I've been tweaking it here and there, and I found a cool mix of cell shade with like actual lighting. So. He already received shadows before, but now he actually gets darker and brighter. You can see in here, he switches to a more blue tint. And in here, he's darker. But it's really cool because I can get him to receive some of that orange light, that warm light from the torches. It's pretty cool. I really liked it. I'm still fine tuning it. Um, you can see that there's some like weird aliasing happening in the darker spots and the shading. The other thing too is, as you can see, the camera is starting to... I think it's moving a little slow, to be honest with you, but I'm going to tweak that. In Wind Waker, like if you move the camera all the way, it kind of stops and lets you pan around him. And then when you zoom out, the values probably aren't exact, but it does pan up and also zoom out at the same time. Pretty cool. Pretty helpful for finding things and looking around. So I really wanted to get that in. So besides those two features, I did go in and tweak running animation. And now you can see, just like in Wind Waker, he moves his eyes to the direction you're moving at. Pretty cool, I think. Yeah, definitely started tweaking that lean and tilt animation. It gives him that weight that he had in the game. Before, he was kind of floaty and kind of static looking, which totally fair, I know. But now with this little addition, I think it helps kind of make him feel more like Link from the game. So that's it for the uh, visual side of things. So now I'm going to show you guys some of the uh, more advanced stuff. As you can see, we got these little red traces in that sphere. Now, why are they there? You might be wondering. But well, I'm going through and creating a custom character controller from scratch. The character controller template from Unreal is good and all. Don't worry. I, I understand that. Uh, but for me, and my, what I wanted to do with Link, I wanted to have more precision and I wanted to have him do exactly what I wanted him to do without having to tick boxes or switch things around. So I had to make a ground detection. So these four line traces, they're aiming downward. I can kind of have him peek over like that without him falling. If I can, I can get this to move. My controller is not very good. But yeah, you can see that at least one of the line traces is hitting the floor so it knows that I'm still technically grounded and I won't start falling or have that weird capsule issue. So that's pretty cool. Um, that white sphere indicating of where uh, the ground point should be and it's actually just an average of the four line trace results. So when I go down and up, up and down slopes or stairs, it's just averaging itself out between the, the four. That's pretty cool because even if there's three traces and get them to move there you go we even have two traces here and it's averaging itself between the, th the four of them and he stays grounded planted and adjusts to the slope accordingly and it's pretty fast it's very smooth don't really see much jitter of course bigger steps might give us give him some problems but i could tweak that um, and it's kind of funny because I don't have a slope limit on this thing yet. So you can actually get him to perch up on very specific slopes. Um, and you can also thank Breath of the Wild for this, but I wanted to test it. But it can jump. I don't have an animation for it, so it's kind of funky looking. But I think it's cool. I do kind of want to experiment with having him do like manual jumps, just like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. But we'll see. I think it's a cool little addition, but... I mean, you guys can tell me if I should. And so that's it for the ground stuff. That part was pretty easy. So this thing was the hardest thing to get right. And it's a little ugly looking, but it serves its purpose very effectively. But this helps with the wall detection. Now, it still needs a lot of tweaking because depending on how sharp of an angle, you can see he starts to jitter. I could experiment with maybe increasing the fan width to kind of stick behind him a little bit so that if you're kind of like at a sharp angle like that one of the ones behind him would also be detecting and giving him more of a, uh, a base to reference maybe i don't know we might not need it kind of a finicky thing to get to work to begin with 
But once I understood the, the issues and I was able to actually start fine tuning it, I think it did a pretty good job. I was having a lot of tr trouble with the corners, but as you can see, he's doing a pretty decent job of keeping himself away. I wonder if I can eventually get myself to peek through. Might be able to. Yep, there we go. As you can see, I'm not going to show you guys my me breaking my own game, but I broke it. But there's just some fine tuning I need to do. It's nothing big. So we have two locations for these speed traces to come out. Bit too high. <laughs> but most of you probably could already tell what this was for. But this is just to make sure that his head can't poke through and clip through things. I can show you guys this little test level as I'm playing. This is nothing special. It's just something that I get to test performance with and also just trying to get like tight corridors and see how it feels. Forsaken Fortress was cool and all, but kind of tuning things and getting these torches to stay pretty performant. I wanted to have something where I could run around for free. Just giving you guys a little tour of my test level. This was a tricky area originally because I found out that the best way up. Uh, look at that. I didn't want to show you guys any of my bugs and I'm over here showing you guys my bugs. Anyways, I didn't think of raising the spring arm location to uh, just above his head. But when I originally made this area right here, since it was casting from its regular position, which is like center torso, uh, it would flip on these little boxes that I had here and cause the camera to glitch out. And so, yeah, I don't really have much else to add. I'm having fun making this custom character controller. Sorry, it took me so long to make this video. You know, I missed a couple weeks here and there. I didn't mean to, but I also didn't really have much to update on. I didn't want to make some short video, not like a wet fart of an update. I feel like this was enough work to show it off. And I guess I could show you guys the current state of the fortress. I'm gonna play. But just know that it hasn't really been optimized, and there's still things that need to be adjusted in terms of the lighting capabilities. There's some darker areas, and there's some like noise and uh, weird shadow ar artifacts if you can see right here. But I just haven't really gone back to like finish this up at all. So this part has been pretty stagnant in terms of progress reports. Also kind of why I made that test level. I didn't want to stay in here because then things would start sticking out to me and be a little jarring and take away from the actual point of my of the work that I'm trying to do. I made that test map to kind of focus in on his mechanics. Uh, this is also another nice example of the cell shading blending with the actual lighting of the scene. I think it's a really nice mix of the two. That weird little faceting shadow thing is bothering me, but I need to do some more research on how to fix that. I'm pretty sure it's just he's a little bit of a lower poly model, so it could just be the lack of polygons on his hat. But I don't know. I just got to keep cranking at his actual mechanics before I start dealing with the nitty gritty details and fixing these shadow artifact thing right here. It's probably a really easy fix. I just haven't actually gone through and worked it out just yet. But I do like the state of the lighting too. Like, uh, kind of liking the vibe that I get from it. Open some doors. Forgot how to open my own doors. Ah, yes. Glitchy door. Always nice. Didn't actually get a close look at this since I was working mostly in the blueprint editor. I didn't really like actually take time to run around here. I'm going fast because there's a lot that goes into it. If you guys want more of a uh, detailed breakdown, let me know. I'll figure out some way to kind of get the information out. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for the patience too. Later.